I messed up. I slept we slash my coworkers, so my husband snatched everything I had. I need your help, you guys. I did something terrible and I regret it, but I couldn't stop back then. And now everything I have is gone. My husband, my family, my friends, and even the things he had gotten me. I don't know what went wrong or how it went wrong, but it all started from the urges. Ladies, if you want to keep your man in your life forever, never listen to those urges thinking he'll never find out. He will. Your man will find out just like mine did. And do you know what he did after he found out? He kicked me to the curb with nothing to my name. If I hadn't listened to those urges, I would still have my husband and all I had to my name. I hadn't listened, and now I'm remembering I feel so pissed at myself. But my husband wasn't completely innocent in all this. He had been the catalyst that had caused everything that I was paying for. Yes, he was always working. I get the work part. I mean, I was working too, but I still made time for him, but he never reciprocated from his end. It was always one meeting after another, and he slept at his office a lot. That would make any sane woman think her husband was avoiding her because he didn't love her anymore. At one point, I had even thought he was cheating on me, that there was one woman in his office that he was screwing, that this was possibly why he couldn't stay away from the office. I confronted him about it, and he had called me delusional, that if he was screwing another woman, he wouldn't be coming home. But he wasn't coming home, and that was the problem. That was what made me mad, and maybe subconsciously I retaliated. I didn't mean to seriously, I didn't mean to be unfaithful to my husband, but they were just really hot men everywhere around me, and I had the urges, the urges my husband couldn't satisfy because he was always holed up at work. Let me explain to you. I worked at a sports agency, so I was surrounded by guys. I didn't have a problem with it because I always liked to be one of the bros, so I hung out with them. Most of my friends growing up had been guys, including my husband. I had always been the cool chick when I hung around. They saw me like a bro. So my husband had no qualms about me working for a sports agency, hanging around me, and the likes. I hadn't even found any of my coworkers attractive. I was in love with my husband. He had been my friend since the beginning of high school and then on to college and marriage. I only had eyes for him until temptation came knocking in the form of the new coworkers that transferred to our agency recently. My name is Laura and I'm 28 years old. My husband's name is Parker and he's 28 years old. We had known each other since high school. He had been the new transfer student that had been isolated, so I took him into my group. My group back then had consisted of the two boys that I had known since kindergarten, my playmates, the children of the women in my mother's circle. So with my husband in the circle, we became four. They had called us the weird fours because we had been unhinged. We didn't care. We just lived the way we wanted to. My parents had thought I wasn't going to marry with all the tomboy things I did and how I knew little to none about being a girl. This wasn't a fairy tale. It was truly how I had lived my life and they had been chewing me out. My mother even sat me down one day before I moved to college and told me she was cool with it if I was on the pride spectrum. It had laughed my ass off. Fast forward two years later and I was dating my husband and my mother couldn't be more happier and proud. Not because I was dating my husband, but because I had managed to snag a man, even if he and I had been best buds since high school. Anyway, my husband and I started dating in our second year of college. And although I still had other friends, he didn't mind it. We hung out together. I hung out with him and his guys, and he hung out with me and my guys. He never showed any indication that he was jealous about me spending too much time with guys. Even my friends had said it was weird the way he was cool with me hanging out with them. I can recall one time when we were hanging out, that is me and my guys and my husband and someone brought up a game of spin the bottle. The bottle landed on me and one of my buddies and I was dared to give him a lap dance. My husband hadn't even flinched an inch. Can you guys imagine that? His girlfriend was twirling on another man's lap and he hadn't said anything. And I had done the dare on purpose. I wanted to see if he would go all alpha male on me and my friends and order no one to touch his girl but my husband, boyfriend then, had stayed out. After the truth or dare game, one of my friends walked up to me and said he would have never allowed me to twerk on another man's lap if I was his. I'm just trying to give you instances of how cool my husband was with me hanging out with the male gender. Well, I hadn't confronted him about it because if he had a problem with it, then I wouldn't be hanging out with the people that truly got me. So we dated and then got married two years after college. Yeah, we had decided to be superstitious and get married two years after because we had started dating two years into college. 
We also got married on the same date he had asked me to be his girlfriend. My husband's parents were rich, but he hadn't leaned on their money after college. He had formed his own startup cryptocurrency and digital assets company, and in two years it had become big, so he had wooed me with gifts. My husband had bought me properties because he believed in real estate investment. He took me out and bathed me in luxury. He had even told me to quit working, but I hadn't because I liked working and I liked what I did, so he hadn't given me any hassle about quitting. My husband had been Jay, but then he began traveling and overworking himself because he was trying to build up branches of his company in other parts of the world. So as a result of this, I hardly saw him again. At first, I had been cool with it because I'd had disturbing clients messing up with my mind, and I didn't really have the time to notice his dwindling absence. I made no fuss about it, but then my work cooled down, and I started coming home to an empty house. One day turned to two, and then turned to a week, and eventually became a month. My husband only came home for a fresh change of clothes, or sometimes he would send his secretary and I didn't get to see him. I had gone to confront him once, and that day was one I would never forget. I think it was that day that made me want to retaliate subconsciously. That day, I had decided I would surprise my husband at work in the afternoon. I was on the one-week leave my agency granted to us tri-monthly, so I was very lonely with only my husband breezing in and out of the house in the early mornings. My friends were now busy individuals and didn't have the time to meet up with me over drinks, so I decided I was going to seek my husband's company by force. I had dressed my absolute best that day and cooked his favorite meal. Everything, I had everything tabled down to perfection. I hadn't known it would come back to bite me in the ass. When I had gotten there, I had let myself into his office even after his secretary had told me not to. That he was in an important meeting, mind you and I was wearing the skimpiest piece of clothing I owned, which came in the form of a gown. I knew I looked hot. I walked in and found him in a meeting with a group of five guys and two women. One of the women had been talking and paused when she saw me walking. Then all eight heads turned to look at me with the secretary rushing in out of me. I'm telling you, it was something straight out of a romance novel. If I hadn't been there live and conscious, I would have thought of what cheesy romantic cliche that scenario was. But it was anything but romantic. My husband looked me in the eye and told me to get out. A whole me? His wife. How dare he have such audacity? But once again, I bottled it up and followed his secretary out. After about 30 minutes later, his secretary told me I could go into his office and once I stepped into his office, my husband lost it on me. Like literally began raising his voice and telling me how he thought I had common sense. This is something he had never done before in his entire life. My husband raised his voice and told me bad words. Up till now, I still can't believe that had happened. Like I had said before, my husband had always been isolated. He was shy and didn't like to talk much right from high school, but he said what needed to be said when necessary and had this aura that made people notice him. Or maybe it was just because he looked rich. Anyway, my husband told me the advice of my life that day in his office. According to him, he only married me because it was convenient. He had known me, and I was available to him, so the right thing to do was marry me. He had said he definitely hadn't married me because of my looks, but because I was cool and, in his own words, one of the guys. I had gone home crying that night because I had loved him, and at that point I still did. So I guess I decided to do something in retaliation subconsciously. I say subconsciously because messing with my coworkers hadn't been something I had planned out to do. Believe it or not, after my husband told me all those things, I still greeted him good morning and made his coffee just the way he liked it when he breezed in from work in the mornings. So you see guys, I hadn't truly meant to cheat, but then these two new guys had showed up at work and I was gone. I know what you must be thinking. How had I messed with two guys at the same time at my workplace? How had I managed to operate that successfully? Well, I thought I had managed, but I had never been more wrong. This was the climax point of my marriage crashing these two hot, beautiful, ethereal men. No, I'm not exaggerating at their gorgeousness, and yes, I know at that point I had a husband, so I wasn't supposed to be thinking of messing around with another man, my co-worker for that matter. Trust me, I had all the voices in my head before I started messing with them. I still couldn't be stopped. What was bound to happen, happened. And it began from compliments, the little things my husband missed. They made me feel like a girl, I wasn't just one of the guys like my husband had put it. It was new. How I had managed to keep them apart. They worked in different departments, 
so they had no idea I was seeing both of them. When the flirtations had started, I had promised myself I would put a stop to it after a day or two. But a day or two led to one week and I began loving the attention. Then, when it began to look very risky, I promised myself that I would stop the fling with one and focus on only one. I couldn't. I just couldn't. But I had loved the attention a little too much. I had flirted like never before and I thought if I was a little careful, no one would find out. Not my husband, not the two men, and not my friends. I had told myself I could be careful. In fact, I was careful. I was extra careful. I didn't have anything to fear from my husband's side from the beginning of the fling since he was always traveling and spending his nights and days in the office a bit too much. Plus, ever since we had that fight, we hadn't had an actual conversation. He seemed to be avoiding me, so I did the same. The only thing I had to be careful about was keeping the two men from finding out about each other and keeping my friends from finding out that I was having an affair. And it had gone well. When I went on a date with one, the other one thought I was sleeping or occupied with work and vice versa. The power had been so thrilling, controlling to men at my fingertips, and they saw to my every need. Spending the night with them was magical. Separately, of course, and my husband never knew. He hadn't even cared to know if I was alive or something. No text from him, no calls, just the occasional breeze in and breeze out on special mornings. That was how it was, and I enjoyed every bit of it, until I got caught in a very big and dangerous spider web. My husband came back. Yes, the traveling stopped. Apparently, he had achieved the opening of his company in the country he wanted, so there was no more hectic work that was keeping him from coming home. So he began coming home in the night, and I was supposed to end all my shenanigans I had with my coworkers. I was supposed to be the smart one, but I had decided to be utterly foolish. I still kept on with my affairs, but this time I couldn't sleep over at either of their houses or stay past the usual working hours. Why, you may ask? Well, my husband finally remembered that he had a wife. He started checking up on me and demanding to know why I was out late after my usual working hours. So I didn't have the freedom to do what I wanted to do. From checking up on me, my husband apologized and became caring once more. You guys recall how I had started this story saying I had loved my husband so much and regretted my actions. Yeah, this was why, because after everything he had apologized and I had run back to him. The day my husband took me out to dinner and apologized, I had dropped the affairs like someone holding a hot pot would drop without caution. I hadn't paid any mind to the fact that dropping the affairs so suddenly would come back to bite me in the ass, but my husband finally loved me again and wanted me so I had to come back to him. That day at the restaurant after I had sent the text to both of my coworkers, the calls and texts started up almost immediately. My husband kept on asking me what was wrong so many times that I had to switch off my phone. After the dinner, we cruised around the city of Pittsburgh and got ice cream and laughed and played like we had never done before. I had to hand it to my husband. The man sure did know how to make a lady feel special. That was all I had felt that night, special. This was before the havoc I had wrecked came crashing down to my face. Two weeks later, I found out that the two men I had been messing with behind their backs were cousins. Of all my dumb fate, they had to be cousins. And I had found out the hard way through blackmail. Yes, the two men I had been seeing on the side found out I had played them and decided to make money out of me. Let me call their names because I have nothing left to lose. Their names had been Peter and Jack. I hadn't known their surnames. Maybe if I did, I wouldn't have put myself in the mess I created. So John decided to text me a picture of me and Jack with the tag. Hope you had fun with my cousin. This was when I knew I had screwed up because after this, there came a flood of receipts. Pictures of me hanging out with both of them individually. Pictures of me texting them and leading them on individually. I mean, everything was just so incriminating and I was disgusted with myself that I had let myself become so unhinged when I was literally married. Their first bargaining price was $50,000. Since I was in my husband's good book, I lied about what I needed money for, and he gave it to me. I had lied on my brother's head. I had told my husband that the money was for tuition fees for my brother in college. Getting that money out of him had been easy. But with time, the requests from my coworkers became too much that I started pawning off my expensive jewelries and diminishing my savings because I couldn't as well ask my husband for 150 grand without him becoming suspicious that something was up. When I couldn't meet the cousin's demands, they became physical. 
threatening to expose me to my husband and HR about how I'd had an affair at work with coworkers. Then once they were done getting me fired, they would move to my husband and get me divorced. I was out of money and had no idea what to do, so I began borrowing from my friends with the promise to pay back. I had tried to sell one of the properties my husband had got me, but I needed his signature to sell it so that option was out of the bag. I was swimming in debt, confused and panicky, even contemplating running away from Pittsburgh to maybe Chicago and changing my name and hair color. But everything came to light. Three months after keeping up with the cousin blackmailers and failing towards the last bargain, I was worrying away at home when my husband barged in from work and asked me who Peter was and what was my relationship with him. You guys needed to see the way my eyes widened in fear because it was over for me. My husband's face was livid with anger, and when I had nothing to say, he flung an envelope towards me and inside were receipts to attest to the fact that I'd had an affair. The next morning, my husband came back and flung divorce papers at me, telling me I needed to sign them before he changed his mind and did something drastic. He left before I could answer him. I didn't have the nerve to show up to work, but I did and then found out that those two evil doers had been transferred. They had just up and left after wrecking my life and making me a serious debtor. My friends wouldn't ask me if the money they had borrowed me so soon, but I knew I had to start paying up before they start asking to avoid them being privy to my scandal. I came back home from work that day and found my suitcases on the curb with my husband outside and waiting for me. He snatched the keys to my car the second I came down from the car and asked for the divorce papers. I tried begging and pleading that we could sort this out, and it was just a small misunderstanding between us. Then I made the mistake of opening my mouth to say that having an affair had partly been his fault. My husband lost it again for the second time in our two years of marriage. He told me things I had been better off not hearing and this fueled my anger even more. According to him, he would never had married me because there was absolutely nothing appealing to him about me. He had just married me because he thought I was sensible. Basically, it was a repeat of all the things he said that night in his office, but this time with more anger. I threw the divorce papers in his face and marched away. Then I dared to do something I would have never thought of doing. I took my husband to court over settlement of property. Another mistake I had made. My husband finished me in court and then proceeded to make sure I got fired from my workplace. I had walked into work and the whispers told me I was no longer welcome before HR did. My husband had exposed my affair to my colleagues about how I had been fraternizing with my co-workers which was against work policy and thanks to my ex-husband. They had enough evidence that I had messed with my co-workers. My ex-husband dusted me in court and I had no claim to all the properties so I had no money, nothing to my name. After the court issue, I had gotten an invite to one of my friends' anniversary dinner. It was a setup to diminish my image in front of my friends. My ex-husband wasted no time in saying how all the money they had borrowed me had gone into feeding my lovers. I was humiliated and embarrassed in front of everyone. I lost everything I owned, my savings had gone into feeding those blackmailers. All the property I thought I had were not mine. My jewelries had already been pawned, and my friends wanted nothing to do with me. Did I still love my ex-husband at that point? I did, and if I hadn't fallen for temptation, my life would still be going smoothly, and I wouldn't have been trying to pay up debts. I couldn't ask my parents for money because they lived on a farm in Wisconsin and considered themselves done with me when they saw me through college. My junior brother was still in college, so he was of no help to me. So I ran away. Yes, I'm not going to expose where I am, but I changed my hair, of course. But I have learnt my lesson, and I hope you learn something from my experience. Do you guys think my husband did me dirty by telling me all those things? Do you think they were true, or he was just saying those words in anger? Well, I would never know, but I would like to read you all's thoughts on it. Bye, Reddit. <laughs>